Hey guys and welcome back and welcome to app 4 which is weeds detection. Not to be mistaken for weed detection. <laughs> Anyways, jokes aside. So over here we're going to detect weeds using YOLO R. Now the only small piece of logic that we're going to add in is to calculate the center coordinates. So say for example we're going to calculate the center coordinates of this bounding box and just get this point over here. Now the reason why we want to do this is if you look at the process, right? We get in our image of our weed or weeds. We process it with YOLO R to get our detections. So we've got our coordinates and bounding box of our weeds, which we can then either pass it to a drone that can use the center of the bounding box to precisely spray some pesticides. So for example, say if you have a nozzle and you want to aim that nozzle specifically at this point in the image. The output of YOLO R is X1, Y1, and X2 and Y2. Now it doesn't help us to aim the nozzle over here in this corner or in this corner. We want to aim it right at the center. So the way we're going to do that is by using a simple logic. So we're going to convert these coordinates, the x1, y1, and x2, y2, into xc, yc, which is x center and y center, along with our width and height. Now we're not going to focus too much on the width and height. We just want to get our center coordinates. So looking at this diagram over here, Say this is our full image, where 0, 0 is in this top left hand corner over here. We've got x1 and y1, and x2 and y2. Now in order to calculate our center coordinates, it's very, very simple. Now just say that we're focusing in one dimension, so we're just focusing on our x-axis. Now we know that the center xc is in between x1 and x2. Now we can't just say x2 minus x1, because we're going to get something right over here. Instead, what we have to do is to calculate the logic. So in order to get xc, we have to take x1, which is the space over here, plus x2 minus x1 and divide that by 2. It will give you this equation over here. Now the same applies for the y-axis, where yc equals y1 plus y2 minus y1 divided by 2. And that's the simple logic that we need in order to get our center coordinates of our bonding box. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task. With many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk, Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. You can head over to www.augmentedstartups.info forward slash vision store. And this is where you'll find a wide variety of projects that you can try out such as YOLO R object detection, face detection, force estimation. You can even create your own Zoom virtual background hand detection, OCR or optical character recognition, and even create your own streamlit user interface dashboard. For now, we'll be going on to page two, and we'll be focusing mostly on weed detection using YOLO R. So you can click over here to check out the project, and that'll take you to this page over here. Now, don't let the image fool you. This is not weed detection, it's weeds detection. <laughs> if you want to see a particular tutorial on weed detection, let me know in the comments down below and also like this video. So this will tell you a little bit about the project. You can scroll down and check out the demo. You can see how well it works and in real time. You can see all of the requirements you need. A GPU is preferable if you want real-time performance, but it's optional. You'll find all of the instructions that you need in order to complete this project, as well as the command that you need to run it as well. But for now, we're just going to download all of the files right over here. 
to click and let it download. It will take you to this page where you can just click and download. However, if you want this project amongst many other cool projects, then you can head over to our YOLO R Option Detection Pro course. And this will teach you a lot in terms of getting YOLO R up and started, training the model, implementing deep sort tracking, building your own streamlit web user interface, and building this amongst many, many other cool apps, as you can see right over here. Great, with that said, let's get started. Great, so once you have downloaded all of the files, ensure to unzip it, and you'll be presented with these files over here. Now just remember that we are only doing detection and not tracking like the previous lectures, so just keep that in mind. Now the first thing that we're going to do is to open up detect underscore base.py. So I've opened it up here in PyCharm. Everything is as you expect it to be from the previous lectures. Now let's take a look at what we have over here. So we've got the weights that I've trained. So this is called best underscore overall dot bt. And I've trained it at around say 299 epochs. Let's go over to the dataset quickly just to see the whole process. So if you go into RoboFlow, we go into overview. I will share this dataset with you. And we'll go into the dataset health check. So over here, I only have one class. Over here. I know it does show two classes over here, but obviously we're just detecting if there's weeds or essentially no weeds. So there's this one image that had zero weeds. So as you know, RoboFlow has this filter feature where you're able to filter out classes that you don't really care about. So I'll show you that in just a bit. So for now, we have around 11,385 annotations from about 4,203 images. Our image size is more or less the same. This shows the heat map, most of it's in the center. And you can see the count of all of the objects within the images. Now looking specifically at the dataset, I'm going to go over here to where it says dataset. Now just note that I've already augmented some of these images already. So you can see some of them over here. Now just note that this might be challenging to a computer vision model because everywhere if you look around it looks green. There's a lot of objects that may look like weeds, like if you look at the features of what we have around us. So looking at what I've done, because it was already augmented in another dataset, all I've done was modify the classes by dropping the one class that I've mentioned earlier. And I just call it weeds version 1. The training process is straightforward, like we did in the previous section on training. So at first I trained it to about 99 epochs. It was working, but it was just okay-ish. There's a lot of false detections. So I decided to train it a little bit more until around 400 epochs. So let's take a look at how this performs. So if we go into our YOLO R Wii's folder, and what we need to do is open up our terminal. We're going to change our directory again. I'm going to change it to this. Over here, I've created the command that we can just copy and paste. So over here, we're running the simple same old script, python detect.py, the same config file, the weights we changed to best overall, which is our trained weeds dataset at around 400 epochs. Let's try a confidence of 0.5. Our device is zero for GPU, and we got a test video right over here in inference in input and it's over here called 1.mp4. So lastly we want to preview our image so we're going to put this argument over here that says view image. So make sure you copy this. Let's go over here. Now before we run it we just need to change one thing which is in the data folder. Instead of coco.names we're just going to delete all of this and type in weeds. Save that and let's see if we run it. Now it's complaining that we don't have the right file. The reason why it's not working is because we just need to specify under here underscore base because we're running the base.py file. So let's run it. Cool, so right off the bat, we see that nothing is happening. It's like it's not detecting anything, even though we train it for quite a lot of epochs. Now this is because the weeds probably blended in with the surrounding objects, because you can see that a lot of features around here look similar to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the confidence threshold. Press Q to exit. 
we're going to go back up and we're going to change our confidence. Let's try it at 0 0.2. See, let's try 0 0.2. If that does not work, press enter. Now you're probably asking yourself, so we're lowering our confidence. What effect will this have on our predictions and will this give us poor results? Well, let's observe what actually happens. And then I'll give you the conclusion as to what my recommendations are. So as you can see, we are still not detecting weeds at the moment, even though we set our threshold to around 0.2. In different circumstances, it's the same issue. Say if this was a white background and this was the only green plant, it would be detecting it a bit more easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit again. Now instead of 0.2, let's try it at around 0.1. Okay, still nothing. Um, let's see if it picks up anything at all. Okay, it did pick up one over there. So let's see if it's picking up random stuff or is it just, okay, we can see that it is picking up that specific weed. It's not random at all. So that's a good sign. So let's just load it even further. So instead of 0 0.1, we're going to make it 0 0.07. Press enter. Cool. So as you can see, we are detecting initially. It's not detecting again, but now at around 0 0.7. So at around 7% confidence, we are detecting it much more easier. So let me give you my recommendations as to what is actually happening here and if it's fine to have a very low confidence as we have over here. Now, the reason why I'm using a very low confidence is, and I'm fine with it, is because it's not detecting random weeds around here. It's detecting just this particular weed over here, the one that we are targeting, which is good. If it was, say, detecting this grass patch over here or this one over here, it was just like random then I'll be concerned and maybe considering training my model for even longer. Like this is actually doing really well. I mean, it's detecting the weeds. The confidence is low as we spoke about, but that is because we're dealing with a lot of background clutter and this is a complex object to detect. Right off the bat, we're getting a lot of true positive, which is great. And it's not detecting any of the other parts of the grass, which are supposed to be backgrounds. And in this instance, we're also detecting some of these weeds as well. This one would probably have a lower confidence rate, but it would pick it up. Like if you zoom out, then you can see that it is detecting those types of weeds, which is great. And not this cross patch over here. So I'm really happy with this model. Obviously, we can train it a bit further, have a bit more data, because with a bit more data, this thing would be much more confident in its ratings and thus you would be able to increase its confidence threshold. So the lesson for today is if you are not detecting anything, then decrease its confidence. Great. So now that we have that, let's implement our logic. So open up detect underscore base dot pi and let's take a look at how we access our coordinates so that if you want to get the center coordinate of the bounding box, so that we can use it for other purposes. So if you have a robot arm that wants to pick out those particular weeds, it notes the coordinates within the image. Or that if you have a drone that wants to spray in a particular position, then it can do so using these coordinates. So the way we do that is pretty simple. We are looking for the detection coordinates, right? So over here we can see that we have x, y, x, y. So that's x1, y1, x2, y2. So over here, we're going to type in print and we're going to type in x, y, x, y. So this is going to print our bounding box coordinates just so that we can see what we are actually getting. So let's run our script again so you can see what's actually happening. And we can monitor our output. So you can see it's a bit fast. Let me just pause it over here. So you see, we're getting our tensors. These are actually our coordinates. So this is 837. So X1 is 837. Y1 is 345. And then we have X2 and then Y2. 
Now this is not in a very user-friendly format because we got a list of all these different things, right? So the way we can do this is we're going to go over here and type C1 and C2. We're going to say that this is equal to int of xy, xy. We're going to get our zero or the zeroth index. I want you to copy this. Put in a comma and this will be one. And put a comma outside here. And then we're just going to copy and paste this again. So C1 will be our initial coordinate. And then C2 will be our end coordinate. So start and end. This will be two, this will be three. All right. So before we run that, let's make sure that our parentheses are all closed off correctly. So this one here doesn't close off, so we need to close it off again. Ensure that we have everything done. Okay, that looks good. Okay, let's hope we let's hope everything works again. So now we're not printing C1 and C2, right? So this is just to see if everything works. So let's do that quickly. So we're gonna say print C1 and C2. Let's run it. Cool, so let's stop it right over here to see if we're getting it. Okay, that is cool. We've got our coordinates there and there and they are in integer format, which is great. We can just comment this out for now because we don't really need that. Let's comment this one out also. And what we can do is we're gonna place it as a text on screen. So that's simple. We're going to put cv2 dot put text. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste this one here. It'll just make it a bit simpler. And we're going to delete this. Instead, we're going to type in string of the integers that we got. That is c1. And we got string of c2. We'll change where we display our text, which is at 130 in the y direction going downwards. We'll leave all this as is and let's run it quickly. Okay, my bad, this was supposed to be plus. Cool, so when it detects, you can see that it displays over here. It's not that legible, but we can always improve on that with some UI elements. Now, as mentioned, having these coordinates is very nice, but not very useful because, I mean, we want to aim our pesticides at the center of the bounding box and not at the extreme corners of it. Because if you look at this corner, there's nothing there. And likewise, in this corner, we want to aim it directly at the center. So let's create a function that calculates the center coordinates of our weed detector. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to put a function. So let's go up and create a little definition. So this definition will be called xy, xy to x, y, width and height. It'll take in our coordinates and our image or image zero. So first up, we need to define our axes. So then we've got x1 equals We've got y1, we've got x2, and y2. So this is going to equal the integer of our first index of our coordinates, like how we did earlier with c1 and c2. So that's 0. And now we're just going to copy and paste this to y1, x2, and y2. This will be 1. 2 and 3. Great. Now we can calculate our xc, which is our center coordinates for x. So this is int. We're going to say x1 plus bracket brackets or parentheses x2 minus x1. And we're going to divide this by 2. We're going to do the same for the y axis. We'll just replace all of this 
but with y. Now these are the equations that we spoke about in our slides, as you can see over here, where we calculate our center coordinates based on our corner coordinates. Very simple equation. Now just to show that we are displaying the correct coordinates, we're going to say print, we're going to say xc and yc, we're going to say cv2 dot circle, we're going to draw a circle at our center, and this will be im0, we're going to draw in our xc and yc with a radius equal to say one color we'll make this bright red so we can see it that's zero zero two five five and let's make it quite thick in case we can't see it okay thickness equals two cv2 okay that's all good now instead of this over here, I'm just going to cut this out. I'm going to paste it over here. And we're going to put in XC and YC. Right, and finally we want to return XC and YC in case we need to use it in future. Cool, so now we have a definition. Now we need to instantiate it in our main script. So let's copy this. Scroll down and right down here we're going to paste our definition. We're going to put in our two functions, so it's im0 and we're going to put in our coordinates which is x, y, x, y. Let's just make sure that we've gotten it correct. So we start with our coordinates first instead of our image. So let's just swap this around. Okay, that looks about right. Let's try running it. Cool. So whenever we detect our weed or weeds, it'll show a nice little red dot right in the center. Now with that red dot or a center coordinates, we can blast a laser or pesticides or use a robot arm to dig it out. Whatever you would like to do with these weeds, it's up to you. But now you have a basis of how you can target different types of plants that are unwanted in your garden. Over here we have our center coordinates. It's not looking that great. It should actually be formatted in a different string. So let's just quickly fix that before ending up this project. So over here we're going to type in plus. We're going to put in some quotation marks with a comma. Maybe add in some spaces, right? So that it's segmented. And then let's run it quickly for the last time. Great, so now whenever we detect our weeds, it will show our center coordinates right over there. And you can send this value to whatever methods or means you want to in order to remove the weeds. Great, with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next app. In this lecture, app 3, we're going to be creating Apple's center stage using YOLO R and Deep Sort. So you must be asking yourself, what exactly is center stage? Well, it is a feature that is incorporated in the latest Apple iPads and MacBooks, where you have a camera 